All right, now during my time in this job, I have been on many endeavors, shall we say. I have raced all over the world at night and during the day. And well, I've pushed myself, my body, mind and spirit, if you like, to the absolute limits. Yes, these adventures, they've left me broken, bashed, bruised and everything else in between. So it got me thinking, what if there was another way? What if there was a way to complete the ride and enjoy it and actually be able to do it again? I'm gonna see how far I can go then on a full charge. No backup batteries, no recharging, no cheating, just me and the bike. We're gonna see who will last the longest. Is it gonna be me or is it gonna be this? Yes, people, we're going till it or I can't go any further. So thanks to Giant for making such a monstrous challenge happen, I find myself heading to deepest, darkest Wales with a monstrous route ahead of me and a monstrous bike, well, between my legs. That bike is the Giant Stance E Plus One, a full fat, full suspension mountain bike with 125 mil travel out back and 140 mil out front, powered by a 75 Newton meter Yamaha motor. A formidable weapon, I think you'll agree then, especially with the addition of the 250 watt hour range extender. But what about the route itself? Well, I've planned a roughly 80k, 2000 meter day with the option to make it longer or shorter, depending upon what happens. So let's hear about the route. Starting in Crick Howell in the Brecon Beacon, South Wales, the route heads east past Clambedar, where I'll traverse the peaks of Blyner Hembon and Krieg Mauer. Then turning north towards the Groenfau Reservoir, I'll cross the River Usk for the last push, skirting around Buckland Hill and onto Crickhowl. This is going to be a mega hilly route with loads of climbing, so it's really going to push battery life to the absolute limit. Off we go then, with batteries full of charge and a backpack full of snacks, I have got a challenge to smash. Here we go, first off-road climb. Let's go from eco up to tour. Sting in the tail there. It's pretty steep, as you can tell by my uber hunchedness. Ooh. I've had to upgrade from tour to active, and it might get so steep, I might have to go into sport mode. And I'm not even wearing Crocs. That's crazy. We are actually only about 10K in, and we're just about to go up to the peak, or the pinnacle, if you like, of Krug Mauer. Now, Excuse me, Welsh people, if I have pronounced that incorrectly or terribly. My Welsh is not as fluent as I would like it to be. But it's 550, and from there, we then got a real cool descent off of the other side. That was sick. This is a little bike that could for 125 mil out back. It feels a lot more plush and planted than that. I would be like, it's a 150 bike, that was dope. Did a few, I don't know if you could hear, but like it didn't even rattle or anything down there. I was expecting like loads of noise and chatter, but yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I just got stung by a wasp. Excuse my language, a wasp stung to me. <laughs> No, I just flicked it off. This kind of stuff's what's eating the battery. So although the motor gives out 75 Newton meters, it's a good amount of power. That choppy, slower stuff is just 
eating battery life a bit. Right, I thought I'd take a quick break because we're at the 20K mark. So we're a quarter of the way into the ride and I've got some great interesting stats for you. So I've used 67% of the battery, but in doing so, obviously traveled 20 kilometers in distance, I've climbed nearly 900 meters. And interestingly, my heart rate's averaging at only 110. So despite all of that climbing, the heart rate because of the e-bike is staying fairly low. Now I know if I was on my normal bike and I'd sort of do it in that same time, an hour 46 it's taken roughly to get here with a, a few navigational issues along the way, my average would be way higher. And first impressions on the bike, apart from the battery life and the range extender, the ride characteristics are actually very impressive for what is essentially a trail bike of an e-bike, that 125 back, 140 front. Strawberry pencils, the e-bike food of champions, I like to think. There is literally nothing oof, for miles around, like way behind me there is poor old cameraman, Joey. But also the reservoir where we came from is literally a speck. Look at it, a vast expanse of nothingness. And a guy on an e-bike, it's pretty sick. On a normal bike, sometimes I'd be like, I just can't be asked to venture up there. And I think that's the difference today, is that the battery power and the motor have given me essentially a bit more of a kick at the butt to roam to somewhere so remote. And look at it. What do we think, cameraman Joey? Oh, oh. Nearly crashed. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So much nicer than the men did. Whoa! <laughs> Cameraman Joey just lost his job. So I briefly touched on the bike I find myself out here riding on, and I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about it. So it is Giant Stance E Plus One E mountain bike. Now it's their trail bike in the lineup of e-bikes, and it costs roughly 4,000 pounds or 5,100 US dollars. So it's made using the Alu XX SL aluminium tubing with flex point suspension system. And what that essentially is, is a flex between the seat stays and the chain stays to give you that 125 mil rear travel. Now, when it comes to the build on this bike, it is built using some pretty solid, reliable parts. So up front, we've got a RockShox fork, the 35 there giving 140 mil of travel. There is a Shimano Dior Link Glide drivetrain with a 10 speed out back, single ring up front, of course. We've got the FSA cranks and there's a lot of Giant's own brand parts on here as well. So things like the dropper, the saddle, the stem, the bars. We've also actually got Shimano brakes there for some proper good four pot stopping power as well. All in all for 4K, a solid build. I've actually opted for an extra large. I'm just over six foot here. I'm gonna hit you with some numbers. So the reach on this bike is 5'10", so nothing too crazy, but a good solid extra large number. A head angle of 65 and a half degrees with a seat tube angle of 76, making it really good on the climbs. Chain stays are a 468 with a wheelbase of 1301, but all in all, a great solid package. Now, this bike and its slightly cheaper cousin, the Stance E Plus 2, both use the same battery and motor, the Yamaha Sync Drive Sport, giving 75 Newton meters of power. The stance range and this bike especially use a 625 watt hour battery, which is actually really easy to remove from the down tube just here. But on this occasion, for this monster of a challenge, I'm also using this, the giant 250 watt hour range extender, which plugs nice and neatly into the power port just on the side here to give me a whopping 875 watt hour. The bike can be controlled on the fly and adjusted all through this here, Giant's ride control dash. So I can actually toggle through the different modes as we go with these two pluses and minus buttons here. But actually not just that, walk mode's engaged here and also I can look at different stats, odometer, speed, and most importantly, range. However, if I wanted to take things a step further and really tune just how the bike works for me, I can go in to Giant's Ride Control app where I can fully customize the motor settings, giving me sort of complete control over how I change what kind of power is going out through the motor. There are five different modes that you can toggle through. Eco, Tour, Active, Sport and Power, giving you varying ranges of assistance, should we say. So there's 50, 100, 175, 250 and 350%. Oh. 
Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Look, I mean, it's like I'm in Lord of the Rings or something. It's not bad, is it? Old uh, Bilbo and his merry men over there and the odd orc over there or something. North Wales. Onwards. Oh, hell. Uh, let the brakes go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a clue what was coming up then. <laughs> nice. GPs, let's go. Alley, 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 alley. Onwards. Oh, hell. Oh, so dope. Okay, this is a bit sketchy and blind. Track goes that way, look. Whoa. Yes, it's oh, oh, my God. Oh. So, this is a bit overgrown. If I die from six million ticks on me, well, now you know where I got them from. Oh, oh, has he held it? Plowing. Ah, ha, ha. Oh my God. This is crazy. But I like it. Into the abyss. More climbing. The little bike that can keeps on canning. Castle Dinas, I told you, Lord of the Rings. Whew. We're gonna go this way though. Earlier on, I was like, oh, my average heart rate's pretty low. We just climbed up some super steep thing where power mode had to be engaged for the first time on this ride. All the assistance was required because it was mega steep. Now I've never ridden a Yam motor, the only Yam motor I have ever ridden was a YZ125 I bored out to a 144 and it went well. I'll be honest, this is comparable. It goes flipping well. For a 75 newton meter motor, it's a nice smooth power delivery and it's got enough oomph to it for sure to definitely get you up something that's unrideable on a normal bike, gradient wise and really choppy. Hey bud. Nice. <laughs> Mm, right, we're doing all right, people. I've had to just sort of pull over for a restock of snacks and things that I've been bought, which is quite nice. I think we're about 44K. Uh, 1,500 meters of climbing. The downside is the battery's showing 24-ish percent and the range is showing about 50K. The problem is, is that the last bit of mileage, certainly the climbing in it was so steep and gnarly, it rinsed the batteries good and proper. Really tackers, really steep. But anyway, I'm not sure we're gonna make 80K, but we're gonna go for it. We, I've got a route, we're gonna throw in some climbs. And the other one, like, I didn't say this earlier, but I'm riding it like a normal e-bike, yeah? I'm not like being super stingy on the modes. Cause I don't think that's how you ride an e-bike or any bike really. So I'm not just going around in super eco mode all the time because that's just not realistically how you ride a bike. We're using tour, active and into sport mode, like across the ranges on all the different terrain. Cause that's what you do, right? All right, off we pop. Whoa, okay, time for a traverse. This uh, rather brown little bit of water behind me there is the Mon the Show and Brecon Canal. So it's kind of this all the way to Crick Howell now, but battery's doing all right. So I think we're gonna have to throw in some spicy little uh, climbs here or there. We might have to deviate. But yeah, it's kind of home stretch-ish, if you like. We've surpassed 50K, but our range, ah, so bumpy. 17k and 12% battery. 50k in. Uh oh. I don't think we're gonna make 80k. Come on. He's loose.
Look, 2%. There's cameraman, it can't stop. I've still got battery to burn. <sighs> okay, that's a wrap, we've done it. I've answered the question of who can last longer, Rich or the bike, and the answer is Rich can. But we did do a whopping 61 kilometers today, climbed 1,700 meters, and the battery here says 2% left, but the range, zero. It's turned itself off, and like the last 5K went into limp mode, so essentially it was eco only. I tell you what, I'm impressed. It went way further than I thought. We didn't make our 80 80-ish K route in 2,000 meters, but I still think 60K or 61K, 1,700 meters is an incredible amount off of a, a 4,000 pound bike. Unbelievable, right? Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think to range extenders? How far do you go on your e-bike rides? I'm keen to know, and maybe we can see if we can find another bike out there that I could go even further on. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, catch you later.